Thank you, and uh, to all of you as well. Um, I have two quick things to mention at the top. Um, first, the United States condemns uh, in the strongest terms the attack on a mosque today in Dammam, Saudi Arabia, which reportedly killed four people and left others wounded. This attack follows last week's um, suicide bombing inside a mosque in Katif, Saudi Arabia, which killed 21 Muslims peacefully engaging in Friday prayers. We deplore the brutality of the terrorists who perpetrated this violence at places of worship. These acts, uh, again, highlight the complete disregard that these terrorists have for human life. We express our deepest condolences to the families of those killed and our hopes for the rapid recovery of the wounded. The United States stands with the people of, the, of Saudi Arabia against this violence and rain, remains committed to working with the Saudi government and our international partners to fight violent extremism in the region. And the second uh, item is uh, just to mention that the Secretary uh, is, was in Abuja, Nigeria today, where he attended the inauguration of Nigerian President Buhari. He also participated in a bilateral meeting with President Buhari. The Secretary is now on his way to Geneva, where he will meet tomorrow with Iranian Foreign Minister Zarif. So with that, over and to I, you, Matt. Well, somewhat related to the tra trip, can you, uh, wh where was the Secretary when he signed the Cuba rescission? Was he in Abuja? Was he on the plane? I don't have a breakdown of, of precisely where he was when he signed the papers uh, related to it. Um, he certainly wasn't here, was he? He didn't sign it until today, and they left yesterday. Uh, again, I don't have a breakdown of precisely where he was when uh, when he signed the papers. Forget um, about but precisely where he was. He wasn't in the United States, right? I don't think well, it makes any difference. I'm just curious. I mean, he left yesterday, so exactly. Uh, can, you, can you check when he signed it? And where he signed it? Uh, I'm not sure we're going to get into that level of, uh, of detail. I mean, you've seen the note we put out, uh, sure. the, uh, the, re the rescission, the lifting of Cuba's designation as a state sponsor of yeah, terror. Well, um, it's a state secret where he was when he signed it, let us know. But I don't see why it would be an issue. It's just a detail that might be nice to have. Um, on, in, terms of, in terms of the rescission, Yes. Um, can you let us know, to tell us where that leaves things now in terms of the normalization process and whether it has any impact on the timing of reopening of embassies or even of uh, the next round of, of, of talks mm -hmm. if there needs to be one? All right. Let me just, uh, I, I'm sure uh, many uh, have seen, but just to point out that we've issued uh, this morning a, uh, uh, a statement uh, about the uh, rescission of Cuba's designation as a state sponsor of terrorism. It takes, uh, it, it is effective today, May 29th, uh, 2015. And this reflects our assessment uh, after undertaking the review um, uh, you know, that was uh, requested by the President. Uh, our assessment that Cuba meets the statutory cr criteria for rescission. Now, Matt, your question was about the process of reestablishing diplomatic relations. I would um, uh, point out, uh, first of all, that the United States uh, sees these as separate processes. Um, the, uh, the review of Cuba's designation as a state sponsor of terror uh, was instructed by the President, um, and we have had a separate process of discussions with the Cuban government about reestablishing diplomatic relations and reopening embassies. Uh, so we see these as separate. Uh, I would also um, go back to uh, last Friday's discussions with, uh, with the Cuban government uh, and comments made by our assistant secretary after those were done, that we are, uh, we are close, um, but uh, we, we have not concluded those discussions yet. We've gotten closer each time. Um, with respect to whether a further round is necessary, I think the assistant secretary uh, addressed that as well, and uh, she said that you know it might be possible to deal with the remaining issues through our interest sections. Um, so, so we'll see uh, if that's possible or whether an additional round is necessary. But we still have some some gaps that we have to close. Okay. So, I mean, can you say if you say you're close, but does that mean Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday next week? I mean, are we talking about something that? Could, could conceivably be done in a couple of days, or is it going to take something? Is it going to take more than that? Well, it's it's hard to put uh, hard to put a uh, a timeline uh, on it. Uh, again, we've uh, we've gotten closer each time. Uh, I think the fact that the assistant secretary said it might be possible to deal with this through diplomatic channels uh, also, um, you know, yeah. should indicate that uh, we may be able to resolve. But I don't want to put a timeline and then on it. I, I'm just going to say, but you're saying that you're saying you see these as separate issues. So the normalization and the and the and the list. Um, 
does that mean that it has no in, that, that 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 what happened today has no impact as far as you're concerned on the on the discussions to normalize? Well, uh, I think the I think the Cuban uh, government has uh, spoken to their own view uh, about about this, and uh, I'll let them speak for themselves about it. But again, we've we've uh, we've said consistently, and it remains our view that these are these are separate uh, processes. This decision was based on the facts uh, and a thorough review, which the president ordered, and which the State Department carried out in right. consultation but with others. But the problem is, is that the, that the president ordered the review on the same day and in the same statement, and I believe it may be in the same paragraph possibly even in the same sentence as the as, as the statement that said that you were going to normalize uh, relations so I, I, I'm not sure exactly why you why you insist that it's a separate thing when it was announced all at the same time well uh, because uh, the, the reason we see it as, as separate is because it's not a it's not a subject of negotiation it, it is a it is a determination based on the facts and evidence uh, that, that the State Department has carried out in conjunction with uh, other uh, interagency partners. Uh, and we've reached the conclusion, which, which was communicated by the State Department to the White House and the White House and then to the Congress um, for the 45-day uh, period, um, that, uh, that Cuba, the certification that Cuba had not provided any support for international terrorism during the preceding six months, that Cuba has provided assurances that it will not support acts of international terrorism uh, in the future, uh, and all of this meets the uh, the requirements of the law. Um, so that's why we see these uh, as separate. Well, are you saying that this review wouldn't have happened uh, or, or, or could have happened without the president's decision to, tr to move to toward normalizing relations? Well, uh, the president instructed uh, us to I understand, to carry but out you're review. saying that they're separate. So this review could have happened without a decision to normalize relations. Well, in, right? in, princi in principle, yes, but okay. uh, you know. Yes. I, so why didn't it? Well, I think. Why, why, I think why, also why did it not I happen have, two I, or I, three I, years ago? Why did Why did it? Mm -hmm. the, the problem is you're trying to say that this is not a political. It's all. It's not linked, but it clearly is linked, and it clearly, at least arguably, could have been done much earlier if it is separate from the whole decision to normalize. Well, I put this in a, in a bigger context, because I, I remember, Matt, at the time, uh, we, we also had a discussion uh, about this. I, I think there are a couple of things that, uh, that, are, uh, that matter here, too. And one, uh, first of all, I'm not going to, you know, the president spoke uh, as to the, the reasons for the, for the new policy direction. I'm not going to analyze or parse them uh, further. I think they're pretty clear. Now, as to the question of why it, why it was not done at some other time, um, you know, we have had uh, in the course uh, of, of our diplomatic discussions uh, with, uh, with Cuba since both presidents announced uh, the, this new policy, uh, the opportunity to talk about, um, uh, separate from the reestablishment of diplomatic right. relations, but we have had uh, through the um, you know, uh, intensified diplomatic exchanges, the opportunity to talk about and to obtain the assurances um, that have gone into uh, our ability to meet the standards in the law uh, and certify um, that uh, that Cuba should not be on the list of state sponsors of terror. So that's been an essential part of being able to do the work that's required under the law. Yeah. What, you know, for the mm -hmm. of the normalization, I just have a very, very quick question. What could the United States and Cuba do today as a result of this recession that they could not do yesterday? Um, if I could, uh, one just one terminological um, uh, mm -hmm. point. Uh, the, 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 the word normalization, I think, is something we see as a long-term right. process. Um, we see normalization as a different thing than the reestablishment of diplomatic relations and the reopening of embassies. Um, mm -hmm. Normalization is a longer-term process. Uh, it, involves a, uh, it involves many other things. So mm -hmm. I, I just want to you know, say we, we, we would use the term uh, reestablishing diplomatic relations. Okay, um, so what is different today from yesterday? What can they do together that they could not do yesterday as a result of this? Well, uh, you know, the, the, the law, um, the, the state sponsor of terrorism uh, designation uh, is, is part of, uh, you know, it, it springs from um, US, uh, U.S. law, and uh, the relevant statutes uh, you know, govern then the effect of it. Um, you know, there are a number uh, of, uh, of laws, including the Export Administration Act, the Foreign Assistance Act, uh, and the Arms Export uh, Control Act. Um, and when a state is designated um, as a state sponsor of terrorism, it triggers a range of sanctions um, and restrictions under those statutes. So rescinding the designation 
um, is is an important step, and then it has uh, you know, certain you know it would then involve the uh, removal of restrictions that uh, would come uh, under that uh, uh, under those uh, laws. So uh, Arshad, what, what is the value of this designation? Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, sure. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, can you be more explicit? Because I think there is the understanding within the U.S. government about what this explicitly means. Mm. Um, the four main effects of being on the state sponsors of terrorism list included uh, a, a ban on U.S. arms exports, controls on dual-use items, uh, the prohibition of U.S. economic aid, and automatic U.S. opposition to loans to Cuba by international financial organizations like the IMF or the World Bank. Mm -hmm. uh, correct? Just for the transcript? Yeah, there are four, four categories. Uh, yeah, those are the four. I, I think we okay. would maybe use slightly different words, but okay. it, yeah. basically, yes. Good. Okay. Second, the way it's been explained to me, but I think it would be useful for the purposes of the briefing, so other people can understand this. Um, wh what I was told is that um, uh, even though in theory those restrictions are lifted under the State Sponsors of Terrorism Act because of overlapping other U.S. laws, the, and I'm going to read it so I don't get it wrong, as a practical matter, most restrictions related to exports and foreign aid will remain due to the comprehensive trade and arms embargo imposed by Congress. Can you say on the record that that is indeed the case, that most of the restrictions related to exports and foreign aid stay in place because of other law? Mm -hmm. Okay, so your, your question has a few parts, and it's similar to, to Saeed's question, but has additional detail. So let me go through um, each, each of those. Um, so rescinding of the designation against Cuba is, uh, is an important step. Let me highlight, though, that the embargo, um, which is uh, a, a, a separate uh, matter and which is to a large degree a statutory uh, matter, um, that is legislation, um, that remains in effect. Um, so the lifting of the state sponsor of terrorism designation does not lift the embargo, just to put that kind of uh, bluntly. Um, and I would also point out that you know, in addition to the state sponsor of terrorism designation, there is a web of, of restrictions and sanctions that have, uh, that have been uh, applied uh, over the years. And some of them are unrelated to the state sponsor of terrorism designation. Now, in the four categories you mentioned, there is, um, uh, for example, uh, the Office of Foreign Assets Control at the Department of Treasury. Um, uh, has a has the terrorism list, government sanctions regulations, um, long one, um, and uh, that so Cuba would be lifted from uh, from that list. That list prohibits U.S. persons from engaging in certain financial transactions with the governments of countries designated as state sponsors of terrorism. So that will no longer apply to Cuba. However. Um, there is uh, also, separately, uh, there are the Cuban Assets Control Regulations, and those will continue to prohibit most transactions involving Cuba um, or a Cuban national, including transactions with the government of Cuba. For more detail on that, I, I would uh, you know, refer you to the Department of Treasury, um, since it's the OFAC's um, responsibility. Um, the second one, uh, when you talk about foreign assistance, Cuba will, would no longer, there's a, a section of the Foreign Assistance Act, um, Section 620A, if you're interested. Uh, so Cuba would no longer be disqualified from foreign assistance under that section of the Act. However, there are numerous other restrictions in the Foreign Assistance Act and in other statutes that will continue to restrict um, foreign assistance to, to Cuba. Um, third, uh, the Export uh, Administration Act. The State Department will no longer be required um, by the Export Administration Act to notify Congress 30 days before granting a license for the export of certain dual-use goods and technology. However, Cuba remains subject to um, a comprehensive embargo, so the export and re-export of such uh, items to Cuba would continue to be prohibited under the Export Administration regulations without a license uh, or unless a license exception applies. I think my colleagues at the Department of Commerce would have uh, in more, uh, more detail um, in that respect. And you asked about the uh, the international financial yes. uh, institutions. Um, you know, the, the restriction uh, on 
U.S. on the U.S. position uh, on loans for international financial institutions would remain because there are still several legislative provisions beyond the state sponsor of terrorism designation uh, governing U.S. support for Cuba's membership in the international financial institutions uh, and their provisions of assistance to Cuba. Uh, the Libertad Act is is one example. Um, uh, uh, among others, of, of legislative provisions that govern uh, the, the IFI uh, regulations. Again, my Department of Treasury colleagues would yep. have more detail no, that's on that. That's very helpful, and I think it's useful that you put that on the record. The one thing that you didn't put on the record, but that I think would be useful to have on the record, is that, as a practical matter, most of the restrictions related to exports, related to foreign aid, and as you now have just confirmed, related to, uh, lo uh, you know, uh, loans from international financial institutions to Cuba all remain in effect? Well, um, as I, again, I don't want to sum those up. Those, those are a lot of, those are four very, four diverse aspects of the law. I've tried to explain, you know, the, the restrictions that uh, would still apply. Um, uh, but again, you know, there are other, um, you know, there are other aspects, uh, including, um, you know, uh, reputational ones uh, and so forth that, uh, yeah, and so the listing as a state sponsor of terrorism would have uh, implications of that can, sort as well. Can you, can you take that question, <clears throat> um, whether you can characterize generally uh, whether it is indeed the case that most of the foreign aid and export restrictions remain in place because of other laws? There's a reason I'm asking this. I think people deserve to have some kind of understanding of what this means broadly. And I think this is not a question that should surprise you guys since it came up in the background briefing on April the 14th when, when this issue came up. So if you would take that question about whether you, whether you can give a more general description, uh, I think that would be useful so that people understand what are actually the implications of this decision. The way I understand it, it's, it, it would seem to be mostly symbolic rather than practical because the overlapping sanctions essentially uh, mean that pretty much all the restrictions that would be lifted are still there under other statutes. Uh, well, I, as I said, there is a, there is a web of, of restrictions out there. So this is one part of uh, uh, of that. So um, naturally, the others. I'm happy to look and see if they, see if we're we're uh, you know able to say it uh, in in a more in simpler uh, in, language. In, um, uh, I'm happy to uh, ask about that. Yes. Thank you. There's a couple couple points on Cuba here. Since obviously there were some on Capitol Hill who you know, wanted uh, to uh, continue the uh, terrorism uh, restrictions here, but they didn't act in 45 days. I mean, tr is there anything that you ascribe that to? Did they just see the light up here on Capitol Hill or what? Uh, I, I, I'd refer you back to Congress for their, um, you know, for the, the reasons they've, uh, you know, taken actions or not taken actions. Uh, I, I don't really, I think we've been confident in the recommendation uh, that, that we as an administration ha have made and that the president sent to Congress. Um, and, and, you know, we, uh, we feel that the, you know, that the facts uh, uh, back up that recommendation. Um, so, you know, I would, I would highlight that, uh, and, and as, we, uh, as we said earlier today, you know, we still have uh, significant disagreements uh, with, uh, with Cuba, uh, and, and we have concerns about, about a number of Cuba's policies and actions. Um, those, those concerns remain. But they fall outside the criteria for designation as a state sponsor. Of was there much of an effort to, from the legisl legislative affairs shop uh, to uh, make this case on Capitol Hill? And can uh, you characterize what? Well, of course, we've had testimony by uh, by officials uh, from from the administration. I don't have a complete catalog uh, in front of me, but certainly over the last uh, you know since the announcement of the uh, of the new policy direction on Cuba back uh, December seventeenth. Uh, we've had testimony by a number of officials uh, from the State Department and from other parts of the U.S. government uh, to uh, to deal with uh, to deal with all aspects of uh, of that. So uh, we've certainly you know considered it important, and we remain engaged with Congress. And finally, here I guess there was uh, an announcement I think made from the, the podium at some point here about that that uh, ETA would not use uh, Cuban property for their terror-related activities here. Was there a similar agreement with uh, the FLAN? Um, with, I'm sorry, with which organization? Uh, the, the Puerto Rico, FLAN. -F uh, I, I don't have uh, uh, information about that. Of course, as a U.S. territory, that would fall under a, uh, a different, uh, you know, uh, set of, uh, you know, uh, that would be a different uh, sort of issue. I mean, as a, uh, as a, a question between, you know, we have, of course, consulted with the governments of Colombia and of Spain 
um, because of the, uh, the history uh, related uh, to organizations from those countries. Um, and uh, so we've, uh, we've worked closely uh, with them. Uh, and uh, both the governments have been supportive of, uh, of, of the U.S. Uh, steps. Um, with, with regard to, uh, to Puerto Rico, you know, one of the other important things that uh, we've announced is that you know, we, will, uh, you know, we will have a law enforcement dialogue. The Cuban government has agreed to a law enforcement dialogue with the United States uh, in which we will be able to address uh, you know, a wide range uh, of law enforcement issues. So uh, that's, uh, that's also an important part of, uh, of, of the dialogue we've had. And before. is there no specificity with the FALN because that is a domestic issue because that is Puerto Rico or just because you just don't, you don't know? I, I simply don't have uh, further detail uh, here with me uh, on that. Anything else on Cuba? Uh, is, uh, yeah. is the administration going to notify Congress that uh, it does intend to open an embassy in Havana? As early as next week, uh, we have not made such a notification. I don't have any uh, uh, anything to preview, and I don't have a prediction. Is about there any reason that. why, now that uh, the uh, rescission uh, from the SSOT has been done, that this notification can't just go ahead? Senior uh, State Department official told us last week that this notification to Congress could have been made several weeks ago. What? Why not? Well, Just let's not let's not put the now. cart before the horse here. We're involved in talks with the Cuban government uh, about reestablishing diplomatic relations and reopening embassies. As as I said in response to Matt's question, we have not uh, you know, finished those talks. We haven't uh, brought them to a successful conclusion yet. We're getting closer, but we we aren't done with them yet. So uh, I think that's where our focus is, and I think that's why we had uh, you know a round of talks last week with with Cuban mm -hmm. officials here in but Washington. But the official did tell reporters last week that even though the talks are ongoing, there is no reason why a notification could not have been made before now. There just was a decision, let's just not do it. But there's legally no reason because the intent is there to well, there, eventually open an embassy. Again, there, there might not be a legal reason. Um, but uh, I would go back to, to the answer uh, I, I just gave. Uh, we are focused on concluding negotiations that are necessary um, for reopening embassies um, and uh, you know, to having a shared understanding of how our diplomatic uh, missions will operate in each other's capitals. That's what we're focused on. We need to, we need to sort that out, um, and, and that's what we're working toward. Go ahead, Pam. In reference to the um, statement issued earlier today, and, and you made mention of this, um, it indicates that the U.S. still has significant concerns and disagreements with Cuba. Being on the state sponsor of terrorism list had been a major sticking point for Cuba. With its removal from the list, um, diplomatically, is there a concern that the U.S. may lose some of its leverage in addressing some of these disagreements and concerns? Well, again, uh, as, as I've said, we've this has been a we do not consider this to be part of the negotiations on reestablishing embassies. Uh, this has not been a, a topic of negotiation. It is not uh, also not uh, you know, part of the agenda for reestablishing relations. Uh, I, I think my you know my answer to Matt on that. Uh, but it stands. had been a big issue for Cuba. Well, that, yeah, and I'll let them speak to that. But uh, but again, I'm I'm just explaining how uh, how we see this. Can you outline? Um, you mentioned that there may or may not be a need for another round of talks. Um, can you outline in general then what's going to be the process going forward for normalization? Well, uh, again, the, 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 the next thing that has to happen is a successful conclusion of those talks on reestablishing diplomatic relations. Um, that's, uh, so I, I'm not trying to change in any way what Roberta Jacobson said. Uh, I'm simply you know, uh, uh, reiterating it. That is, um, we, had, uh, we had a round of talks last week. Um, we're not quite there yet, um, and we need to uh, we need to finalize them. Um, and uh, she spoke to the you know the different ways in which um, we could move we could move forward to bring those to a successful conclusion. All right. Anything well, else on Cuba? I yes. Want to make sure make, 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 make one thing clear. It is it, it is not cor it is not correct that the designation of a state as a state, state sponsor of terrorism is a legal impediment to diplomatic relations. Correct. Well, we have had uh, diplomatic relations with others. Uh, who have Sudan, been on, you still do. Uh, yes, and um, it is also not the case that countries that are not so designated, or <clears throat> it is also not the case that you recognize or you have diplomatic relations with all countries that are not designated state sponsors of terrorism. I'd have to go through my North catalog. Korea. Um, um, 
North Korea. Which yeah, came I mean, off the and, establishment of diplomatic relations is done by mutual consent in, in accordance with the, the Vienna Convention. So, yeah, you're right. Uh, okay, uh, nothing else on that. Let's move along to a new topic. Um, Pam? Spain is saying that the U.S. is going to set up a force of about 2,200 Marines for deployment on an Africa mission, and this is something that will be discussed when Secretary Kerry arrives there. Can you confirm this? Uh, what sort of a mission can you, uh, do you have, uh, I, I'm not familiar with those, uh, with those reports. Um, a permanent force of about 2,200 Marines for deployment to Africa, but they'll be based in Spain. Uh, well, uh, I'm not. I'm not familiar with that. With that report, uh, I, I'm happy to check with my Department of Defense colleagues uh, uh, to see. I have, but uh, I don't have any uh, any detail to to offer on that. Um, yes, Arshad. As you're aware, um, uh, uh, the IAEA's latest confidential quarterly report says that Iran has provided some information about two uh, open issues in its, in the possible or potential military dimensions of its nuclear program, um, that they've provided some information related to one of the issues but not the other. Um, is that a good sign, step in the right direction? Does it suggest that they are finally getting ready to address all the questions on PMD? Well, um, it won't surprise you to, to hear that uh, you know, I'm not going to comment on uh, IAEA reports that have not yet been, been publicly released by, by that agency. Um, so I, I don't have a okay. substantive response. Uh, Happy to send you a copy if you... Uh, well, uh, it, it, it's, it's been our practice not to comment on those uh, w when they're not uh, publicly released. Um, we, as, a, as a more general matter, we continue to call on Iran to cooperate fully uh, and without delay with the IAEA to resolve all the outstanding issues, uh, in particular those that give rise to concerns about um, possible military dimensions of Iran's uh, <coughs> nuclear program. This is, of course, one of the issues that we're working to resolve uh, in the nuclear negotiations. So it's one, certainly something we take seriously. Sure. One other thing. Um, uh, the Secretary, as, as you've announced, is, is now only a matter of hours from meeting uh, his Iranian counterpart in Geneva. Um, uh, and as has also been put out, the Secretary uh, Muniz will be there too. What, what do you expect out of tomorrow's talks, if anything? Well, uh, we're, you know, we're in, in the uh, last uh, month, or soon to be in the last m uh, month before the, uh, the June 30th deadline. So, of course, this is an opportunity for, uh, for the, the Secretary uh, along with uh, Secretary Moniz um, to take stock of where things stand uh, as we are working to finalize the technical details and reach a comprehensive deal. Um, so uh, I'm not going to preview uh, the substance of their, of their discussion, but of course this is an important uh, part, uh, the, the senior level, political level uh, engagement uh, to keep the talks moving forward. We've had uh, expert level and political director uh, level uh, discussions. Uh, in fact, uh, you know, uh, Under Secretary Sherman uh, it was in Vienna uh, yesterday, um, and uh, and so it's it's important that uh, that these continue moving forward. Uh, that's uh, I, I don't have further to preview you know, uh, you, beyond that. Do you see any breakthroughs coming out of this meeting, or do you expect things to unspool more slowly over the next month or so? Uh, again, on that, I, I, I think I'll refrain from a, a prediction uh, about the pace. Uh, we believe it's possible to achieve uh, a, a comprehensive uh, deal by, by the end of June, and, and Secretary Kerry is uh, engaging with Foreign Minister Zarif uh, you know, to, to, to help move things forward to that end. In terms of the IAEA report, um, let's talk about the last report, not this one that came out today, whether it was publicly released or not. Um, you have seen it, it, you meaning this administration has seen it. The collective, yes. Um, <clears throat> but let's talk about the last one, the one before this one, which said almost essentially, well, said essentially the same thing as this one, which is that Iran, although there has been some movement in terms of communication on one of the issues, has still not addressed the whole question of PMDs. Is it, does it remain the administration's position that the issue of PMDs, which according to not just the IAEA report that came out today that you won't comment on, but the last one and the one before that and the one before that and the one before that, going back mm -hmm. several years, 
um, that 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 those that the PMD issue is it still the position that the PMD issue must be addressed as part of a comprehensive deal? Yeah, this is uh, as as I said also to Arshad, this is uh, this is an important issue. Uh, we we re, you know we continue to call on Iran to cooperate fully uh, with the IAEA uh, about the possible military dimensions uh, and That's those uh, those concerns. Well, and, and this is one of the issues uh, that we're working to resolve uh, in the nuclear uh, negotiations. Uh, yeah. And and in fact, you know Iran uh, has committed uh, in the context of those uh, of those negotiations. Um, to address uh, those concerns, they've but committed in the in the JPOA and in the framework agreement. But that's not quite the same as saying the administration's position is that Iran must address and satisfy the concerns of the IAEA on the PMD issue as part of a, a, a conversation. Uh, resolving the PMD, PMD issue has always been a part of our. I, I just position. want to make sure yeah. that it hasn't changed. No, I don't have anything. Uh, I don't have any changes to our uh, policy to uh, to announce. Um, uh, okay, new <coughs> topic. Go ahead. Um, I have another topic about the Chinese fugitive. So, uh, and several questions about the cooperation be uh, between China and the United States. Um, according to media, China's most wanted fugitive, Yang uh, Xiuzhu, is accused of embezzling over $40 million, uh, may be deported on visa related violations. So, can we have more information about that? Because we know there's a person having the same name uh, in custody in Hudson County Correctional Facility. What is the next step? Uh, well, uh, on uh, you know those kinds of matters, uh, it's not the State Department that's in the lead. That's uh, that would be my uh, colleagues over at the Department of Homeland Security. So I would refer you to them for any uh, any questions that relate uh, to uh, possible deportation of anybody. As we know, recently China uh, released a list of 100 alleged economic fugitives, which aim to bring them back to the country. About 40 of them were suspected in the United States. Do you think um, this case is the latest sign of the, um, I mean, cooperation between China and the United States from um, law enforcement authorities? I mean, um, do you think it, how positive or how optimistic of the United States in solving this kind of problem with China? Well, I'm not. I'm not in a position to confirm uh, that uh, the, the particular case uh, okay. to which you've referred. So, uh, so I'm not. Uh, I'm not going to comment on that. But um, certainly, we've uh, we've discussed uh, with with our Chinese counterparts. Uh, we've had discussions uh, on these sorts of issues. Um, you know, those are diplomatic discussions. I'm not going to uh, read those out. Uh, we understand uh, mm -hmm. these are important to China. We also, uh, you know, consider law enforcement issues important. But uh, I think I'll uh, I'll leave it uh, at that. So there is ongoing um, dialogues or discussion with China regarding fugitives, right? Um, well, we've certainly discussed them. I don't want to convey. I mean, when you say an ongoing di ongoing dialogues, uh, I'm not I'm not sure how you how you mean that. I mean, certainly, it's something we've discussed with China, uh, and it's something that uh, we I'm sure we will discuss again in the future. So um, it's uh, you know it's it's uh, a matter for diplomatic uh, uh, discussion. Did you have something oh, on this? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, just this just happened, but uh, since the administration writ large, broadly, at least another branch of the government has shown in such an intense interest in the workings of FIFA, I'm wondering if you would care to congratulate Sepp Blatter on his reelection as president of that organization. Uh, well, I haven't. Uh, you know, you, you, you've been. Uh, I'm sorry, you haven't been paying attention to the briefing. You've had time to check your uh, uh, check your phone and find out uh, information I don't have. Um, uh, but you know, we don't have a. At the same time, I'm uh, I'm I'm sure of that. Uh, we don't have a position on who's elected president of FIFA, so I don't uh, I don't have any uh, any special comment uh, on that. Uh, but thanks for the update. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, yes, perhaps uh, we don't have a position on who should be president of FIFA. Go ahead, please. Uh, well, one question on Russia and the others. Uh, so, uh, are you aware about reports uh, quoting the Prime Minister of Netherlands that Russia uh, yesterday issued a blacklist of European politicians they, uh, who may no longer enter Russia? Do you know something about it? I, I don't. Uh, I, I had not heard about that. Uh, mm -hmm. So, uh, no, I'm, I'm not, uh, not familiar with, uh, with okay. those reports. And the second topic about um, <clears throat> a letter. A letter um, uh, which was uh, published by American historian Eric Zeiss, uh, a letter from chairman of Ukrainian parliament to uh, U.S. embassy in Oslo. So uh, he wrote that uh, chairman thanks embassy for efforts to have Ukrainian president Poroshenko nominated for a Nobel 
piece price. Can you confirm uh, this information? I'm not at all familiar with that uh, with that exchange or uh, with uh, with this correspondence that you're referring to. So, uh, excuse uh, me. Uh, uh, does U.S. Embassy um, have any communications with the Nobel Committee about it? Uh, again, I'm not uh, I'm not familiar with uh, with these communications, so and I simply okay. have uh, have nothing uh, so to last say. Last question it. is about uh, mm, I've read about uh, some problems uh, in Department of State uh, in uh, issuing visas in several countries. Is it true or not? In which uh, um, in which countries? Um, the problems uh, regarding uh, issuing visas uh, in different countries. Um, I have not heard about uh, any disruptions to. Uh, are you are you saying technical uh, difficulties? Technical, I um, suppose. Yes. I'm not uh, familiar with any, but I'm happy to check and see if mm -hmm. uh, if there's anything. I, I hadn't heard anything today uh, about that. Elliot, go ahead. Um, Last well, week. Oh, mm -hmm. sorry. Do you want to stay on the same topic? Question. Yeah, please. Just wanted to follow up on my question from yesterday about this yeah. uh, opposition figure who has um, mm -hmm. been uh, hospitalized. Uh, do you have answers to my questions? Um, so your your questions, if I My recall correctly, was, were about um, right, whether he, we had had any contact and and uh, things of that. Considering uh, that members of his family are U.S. citizens, and also that apparently he and his wife are both permanent residents of the U.S. or have green cards, mm -hmm. what's um, the role the U.S. is playing, if anything? Well, um, as uh, you know. As a general matter, we don't confirm um, citizenship statuses uh, of, of individuals, um, and for the permanent resident status, uh, uh, the Department of Homeland Security, I believe, has a similar policy not to confirm um, such things. So, so on that, I don't have anything uh, to share. Uh, your, with regard to your question about uh, any contacts between uh, the State Department and uh, the, the family, um, uh, also, for privacy considerations, we, we would have uh, nothing, uh, you know, nothing to add uh, about that. Um, now, the, getting to the, to the question, uh, though, of, uh, uh, of Vladimir Karamorza, uh, we, as we talk, discussed yesterday, uh, we, of course, are concerned about his health. I think you may have seen there was a, a, a tweet from Ambassador Teft uh, at Embassy Moscow in which he also um, uh, mentioned that. Um, so that uh, that concern remains. Uh, we we take an interest in it, but um, I would also say we're aware of some public comments uh, today by some uh, by some family members um, about uh, about his situation. I don't, we don't have anything further to add uh, to them. Uh, it, do, do you said that you couldn't talk about any contacts due to privacy concerns? The privacy concerns extend to non-American citizens or non-green card holders. Uh, well, uh, it's my understanding that privacy, the Privacy Act applies uh, to um, U.S. citizens and to lawful permanent residents. Okay. So why do we drop this ridiculousness? Because you basically just confirmed that they are no, either I haven't. U.S. citizens. You've asked well, me you as a general you matter whether, uh, whether, 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 whether the, you know, where, to whom the Privacy Act applies. Right. So if it doesn't apply to them, you would be able to talk. I'm sorry, about Matt. That. I, I think we're going around in circles I mean, here. I don't have. I don't. Well, no, but I mean it's ridiculous. As you say that that they're covered. You can't talk about their case because of privacy concerns. And at the same time, you say that that or you can't talk about their citizenship or whatever because of privacy concerns. But but then you say the privacy concerns don't apply to non-Americans or non-permanent residents. So. Why, can't, why not just drop this pretense and come well, out and say I, that No, but you're, you're sort of presupposing, Matt, that we would, as a matter of course, talk about any contact we had with any non-U.S. citizen and non-U.S. permanent resident, well, and if that's asked, not the case. And you, if, I, if asked and, and you knew the answer to it, I would hope you would if you were asked. Well, we, won't talk, we don't talk about every private uh, conversation uh, we have, uh, yeah, so uh, that's, uh, yeah. Something about that? Uh, well, I, I, think, I, think we've got a I think you've got a longer term project uh, ahead of you there. Um, so, um, Elliot, go ahead. Thanks. Uh, last week I asked Murray <clears throat> about this uh, amnesty report on uh, alleging a dearth of progress in Qatar to address labor abuses. I was wondering, she said you guys were reviewing it. I was wondering if there's been any progress on that. Um, I thought I, I thought that I was asked about this later in the week, and I responded to it. Uh, if I'm, okay. uh, I if, that yeah, um, uh, if, if yeah, uh, and, and if not, we'll uh, we'll get you the answer. Sure. Pam, uh, on the same the well, same the same, same topic. topic, but amnesty. Uh, well, Pam's, Pam's okay, been waiting fine. patiently. We'll come back to you, Saeed. Go ahead. Do you have a readout from the secretary's bilat in Nigeria? Um, in particular, would be interested in anything that might have been said about efforts to fight Boko Haram. 
Um, I don't have further detail. Uh, the, the meeting happened uh, just before departure, so um, I, I think we may have uh, more, to, more to say in, uh, uh, you know, a, after we get uh, more of, uh, re feedback from uh, the traveling party. Um, go ahead, Saeed. I just want to follow up very quickly. Uh, Amnesty issued a report today saying that Saudi Arabia executed 90 people since the beginning of the year, and he called this shocking. Many of them, I guess, they're all, maybe all, were beheaded. Do you have any comment on that? I haven't seen that report, uh, so uh, no, I don't have a specific. But if the uh, figure, if it. the figures are true, and you know we have no reason to doubt Amnesty's figures, would that would that is that also shocking to you guys as well? Again, I'd want to I'd want to take a look at the at the report and the and the particulars uh, of it before uh, offering a comment. Okay. Can we um, go to Isaac. Yes, Isaac. please. Okay. Uh, there are reports that uh, ISIL has taken over an air base in Libya. Do you have any comment on that? The CERT Air Base. So, um, with uh, with respect to to, uh, to Libya, um, mm -hmm. you know we're uh, we're certainly aware um, that Libyan forces have been confronting um, uh, groups that have pledged uh, allegiance to ISIL uh, in the CERT area for uh, for a number a number of weeks. Uh, yeah. I'm not in a position to confirm the specific yeah. report. Um, yeah. But uh, certainly, okay. we're aware that the so, Libyan forces so, so are fighting you, against. So you don't know whether that airbase has fallen in the hands of, of ISIS. I'm not. I'm not in a position from here okay. to give you a on, confirmation just, uh, of that. In kind. Syria, there are reports that the uh, Turkish government is ferrying trucks, convoys of trucks, laden with arms and, and rockets, and you know, and volunteers and so on into Syria. Are you aware of that? Or well, is I, that part of the train and equip program that you guys have that talks about fifteen thousand? 15,000 members of uh, Syrian opposition? Well, uh, I'd refer you to the Turkish government for uh, if you're, if, if mm. what you're uh, talking about uh, are reports about Turkish government activities. Yeah. Our train and equip program, uh, which right. is a program led by the Department of Defense, as, mm. you, as you well know, has uh, gotten underway recently, and, uh, you know, but I'm not going to provide operational yeah, but, details. But if I'm not uh, wrong, I think the Foreign Minister Uglu said that uh, you know, this process is coordinated with you guys. I mean, the, the, current, the current accelerated activities of training, uh, arming, supplying, ferrying uh, volunteers into Syria. Well, certainly we work uh, closely together with our Turkish uh, coalition partners uh, on the train and equip program. Um, mm -hmm. And, uh, and, and you know, that's, uh, I think that's been clear for some time. Uh, but I'm, I'm not in a position to link it to this uh, report that you've, uh, you've referred to. Okay, and finally, I, um, I have a question on this, in, in your estimation. There is a lot of reports that are saying that the Syrian president Bashar al-Assad is is basically on teetering on the verge of collapse. Is that is that something that you agree with? Uh, well, uh, which well, uh, I mean, uh, most all reports say that the you know the noose is is tightening. I mean, do they use terms like this on on the Syrian regime? Is that your assessment? Well, I'm not going to give a day-to-day -day update about mm -hmm. uh, about the um, situation of the Assad regime. Our, situ our, our position uh, yeah. on President Assad has been has been clear for a long time. Right. You know, we believe he's lost his legitimacy. We believe right. he has he has no future uh, in in Syria, and he must go. But uh, you know, I'm not uh, I'm not going to give a day-by-day -day, um, okay, you know, analysis for a, of for for a long time. You were, you were saying that his days were numbered, and then you you stopped saying that. Uh, are we back where his days are numbered again? I, I don't have uh, I don't have a further um, you know timeline to put on uh, uh, on, on his in his rule. Um, uh, yes, we can. And then, yeah. yeah go ahead. Um, regarding uh, the ongoing uh, efforts to uh, retake Anbar from uh, ISIL, uh, Sunni fighters have uh, told our channel that they've been asking Baghdad for weapons for training and that they're not getting it, and they suspect that it's because they're Sunni. And those comments come on the heels of the defense secretary saying that it may be time for the U.S. to actually directly train Sunni tribes and provide them weapons. Does this administration believe that Prime Minister al Abadi is acting in good faith when he says that he's trying to have a unified front against ISIL, or does this administration believe that he's favoring? Can I stop you there so I give you a one-word answer? Yeah. The answer is yes. Do we believe he has, uh, he has, uh, is committed to uh, a, his policy, uh, implementing his policy uh, of a unified uh, Iraq uh, and to representing the interests of all, 
uh, of all of Iraq's people, yes. But the defense secretary also told reporters on his way to Singapore that as far as the Pentagon can tell, the ongoing training that's been happening, the ongoing arming that's been happening coming out of Baghdad has been primarily to Shiites and not to Sunnis. So it kind of begs the question, is a body doing enough to actually make this a unified fight? And if he is, why would then the defense secretary say on the record that it may be time for the U.S. to essentially step in, even under the rubric of acting on the invitation of Baghdad, but do the training and the arming itself? So uh, let me, so you've, you've packed a lot of questions into, into that one. So first, you know, the, the government of Iraq is determined to eject ISIL from Ramadi, um, and the international coalition shares uh, this, same, uh, this same determination. And we are supporting you know, the efforts led by the government of Iraq to liberate its territory from ISIL um, uh, in Anbar and in other parts of Iraq. So we're going to continue to support uh, our Iraqi uh, partners. Um, we will do, uh, do everything that we can to support uh, Iraqi forces, including the tribes of Anbar, um, as they try to secure the province from ISIL. This includes our ongoing training and equipping program, um, our airstrikes, our expedited provision of equipment to address the threat posed by ISIL's use of truck bombs, um, because we recognize that our strategy requires a well-equipped and trained uh, partner on the ground. Now, with regard to the question of Sunni uh, tribes, uh, we are encouraged by the announcement uh, of hundreds of additional tribal fighters um, in Anbar province, uh, and, uh, that the, and they were inducted into the popular mobilization forces uh, two days ago. Um, you know, the Iraqis have to be uh, empowered to take this on themselves, and, uh, and so that's why we've been uh, you know, engaging with Iraqis uh, across the political spectrum, locally, nationally. Um, and we believe Iraqis are determined to rise to this challenge, and Prime Minister Abadi and his cabinet and his council of ministers uh, are, are as well. Has the U.S. made it very clear, though, to Abadi that he has to be as vigorous as possible to make certain that there is parity between Sunnis who are fighting and Shiites who are fighting? Well, we have. Th this is this is central to Prime Minister Abadi's uh, plan, and we uh, we support him, and we are in regular contact with him and his government about it. I, I would I would also you know point out that it was the Iraqi Council of Ministers uh, just uh, about ten days ago uh, that uh, that announced the uh, accelerated training and equipping of local tribes in coordination with Anbar authorities. This includes uh, in recruiting into the Iraqi army, but also the popular mobilization forces. Um, there are Sunni tribal units currently being uh, trained by the Iraqi uh, security forces and equipped by the government of Iraq. Um, and uh, you know, this is part of their budget. Uh, a lot of these resources are now coming uh, on stream. Um, uh, and in the same way, um, you know, the, uh, the U.S. Uh, and, and a lot of the uh, assistance from, uh, that was approved by Congress, the $1.6 billion mm -hmm. that was approved at the end of 2014, um, is, al is also coming online. So we're seeing you know, these increased efforts uh, from uh, the Iraqi government, but also uh, a lot of our stuff coming online, too. And this might be a better question for the Pentagon, but do you anticipate that as the U.S. continues its train and equip mission, that U.S. troops will be actively engaged in working with the Sunni tribes to make certain that they have the capability and the equipment to... Uh, engage in this fight against uh, ISIL? Uh, well, uh, again, our, our, train, uh, our train and equip uh, uh, program um, it, and the locations uh, where it's uh, being carried out, uh, the, you know, those, uh, those are better questions for the uh, Department of Defense. Uh, I don't have any announcements to make uh, on their behalf, but, uh, but certainly uh, you know, we, have, uh, we have been, uh, you know, as our assistance um, approved by Congress uh, comes online, um, this also it, it involves um, providing uh, assistance to the Sunni, uh, Sunni tribes um, with the approval and in coordination with the, the central government in Baghdad. Okay, and then one question on the human rights situation. Mm -hmm. People in Ramadi and the surrounding areas are complaining that Baghdad is still making it very difficult for them to basically escape the fighting, especially if they want to go to Baghdad, they need to have a relative sponsor them. Baghdad's argument is that they want to make certain that members of ISIL aren't sneaking in among those who are trying to escape the fighting. 
is Baghdad being a little too careful by half in the U.S.'s estimation? Well, we're concerned about the humanitarian situation uh, in Iraq, um, and there have been a lot of people displaced uh, uh, from Ramadi uh, and around. This is, uh, of course, a complicated humanitarian crisis. There are about 2.8 million people, uh, 2.8 million Iraqis internally displaced uh, since since the start of, uh, of ISIL's uh, mm -hmm. uh, campaign in January 2014. Um, so. You know, we are we are certainly uh, aware of that, and we remain in in contact with Iraqi authorities uh, about it. Uh, we recognize their efforts uh, as well to provide the displaced people with financial support uh, and and food rations, and we continue to urge Iraqi authorities to take all measures to assure um, uh, to assure safety and free passage to people who are fleeing the violence. Um, <clears throat> you know, you, you made uh, reference, uh, uh, and there has been reference made in the mm -hmm. in recent days to situation at, at the bridge um, uh, leading into Baghdad. Um, uh, we understand that that bridge was open and approximately 3,000 families with sponsorship in Baghdad have been allowed to cross uh, and, and that very few families remain around the bridge. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't change the fact that the overall situation um, you know, for many people who have fled the violence remains dire and that's why we remain engaged uh, on it. Is the sponsorship though uh, perhaps an impediment to uh, providing physical safety to mm. others who are trying to escape the fighting in Ramadi? I don't have a, a particular comment on, on that uh, aspect. Um, uh, Arshad, go ahead. You yeah. Said, um, you believe that Iraqis are determined to rise to this challenge? Uh, what makes you believe that? Well, as I said, this is a, you know, we've been, uh, we've been in contact, uh, you know, over the last uh, days and weeks with people uh, across Iraq, uh, with people across the political spectrum. Um, local officials, national officials, um, and that's uh, you know that's the feedback uh, that uh, that we get, and that's uh, did, you know, did why you we're committed to helping. Uh, did you Iraq. believe when the United States re removed all of its uh, uh, combat forces from Iraq at the end of 2011 that the Iraqi forces were, were uh, then capable of and determined to defend their country's territory? I don't have a retrospective analysis at my fingertips here to uh, offer. Well, why would you uh, pull that if you didn't think they were capable of it? And public statements by multiple officials suggested that the United States believed that they were capable of defending their territory. So um, the reason I'm asking is it's not clear to me why your judgment, which was that they could fight back then, is necessarily, uh, and, and appears to have been wrong, is necessarily correct now that they can and will fight. Well, uh, again, I'm just uh, I'm just passing on to you what we what we hear now uh, from uh, from the people uh, we are in contact with across uh, across the country. Um, we realize, and we've said many times, that this is a very difficult fight. It's not. Uh, uh, it's by no means easy. So it requires uh, it requires commitment, and it requires um, you know, the uh, leadership, uh, which uh, again we believe Prime Minister Abadi uh, has been demonstrating through his efforts to reach out across uh, sectarian and uh, and ethnic lines. Uh, Atsushi. Security. As you know, uh, Secretary Carter is now uh, visiting Singapore and for attending you know, the Shangri La dialogue. Mm -hmm. And as you know, uh, China, uh, the state spokesperson of the Chinese Ministry of Foreign Affairs uh, yesterday claimed a part of nations agitate this situation in South uh, Spread the Island. And that's the root cause of the confusion. Also, uh, and also, you know, China urged the United States to stop. Provocative statement. So, do you think it's an um, uh, U.S. argument? U.S. statement is a kind of provocative. What, 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 is, what do you think? What is a uh, well? Uh, short answer: No. Uh, you know, if if you look at what's been going on uh, in the South China Sea, we are very concerned about recent developments there, which include large-scale land reclamation um, uh, and uh, and associated activity. Uh, we've spoken out about that. Um, uh, also, countries in the region have expressed uh, their concerns uh, about it. Uh, and we see that as, uh, as the, uh, you know, the reason behind um, you know, rising tensions uh, uh, in that regard. And as you know, you know Secretary Carter uh, urged the China hold the reclamation, not the China, the all the, all the crime hold uh, the, to stop the reclamation works. But it seems like, you know, um, uh, they their climate, including China, doesn't listen to these international community. So my question is, you know, are we going to have a, a SNAD next month, and 
next week, next weekend, you know, President mm -hmm. will, will be attending the G7 summit meeting. I believe, you know, the Secretary Kerry last month, I think last month, uh, discussed this issue on uh, G7 ministry meeting. So, oh, how the United States is going to deal with this issue? What's the next option to stop these reclamation activity? Well, uh, you know, we've we've been clear with uh, with all the claimants, uh, including with China, that uh, that we oppose, um, you know, the, any further militarization of of outposts in disputed areas of the South China Sea, uh, and that all claimants should avoid any actions that escalate uh, tensions. So we we urge all claimants to show restraint uh, and to halt reclamation in favor of diplomacy. Uh, so as we have always uh, said, we support the freedom of navigation and overflight and free flow of commerce through the vital waterways of the South China Sea uh, and uh, you know, the, the non-use of force or coercion and respect for international law, including uh, UNCLOS. Uh, so that remains uh, our position. Anything else, Matt? Also slightly, not exactly the same region, but close by, or somewhat close by. Uh, what's the status of the overflights with Thailand? Did you, were you able to give an answer to that? Ah, question? yes. Okay, and as you uh, probably know, there was a, a meeting today in in Bangkok, which uh, which was focused on uh, on this uh, situation. Um, one one or two points about the outcomes of the meeting, and then uh, we're encouraged that the attendees at the Bangkok meeting uh, agreed on the need for regional coordination um, and on increased efforts to save the lives of those still at sea, to provide protection to migrants, to combat transnational smuggling and trafficking networks and to address the root causes uh, of the crisis. And we also are pleased that, uh, that the participants agreed on the importance of continued international cooperation uh, and dialogue that would go beyond uh, today's, today's meeting. The United States uh, today uh, pledged an additional $3 million toward the International Organization for Migration's Humanitarian Appeal. Um, and uh, with regard to, uh, to the uh, U.S. Kind of operational uh, activity, um, we welcome the announcement uh, by Thailand um, to, to approve U.S. Uh, overflights. Um, Thailand has authorized us to conduct uh, these maritime uh, domain awareness flights through Thai airspace to assist in locating and marking the positions of vessels possibly carrying irregular migrants. Now, these, uh, we're working with uh, the, the Thai authorities to finalize uh, the operational details. We expect that the initial flight that would go through Thai airspace would occur in the, in, within the next few days. Uh, flights will continue to operate from uh, the, the Subang uh, Air Base in Malaysia. Sorry, what carrying what migrants? What was the word in between carrying and uh, Oh, irregular. Irregular? Irregular. I, that is, uh, well, uh, you know, one of, I think one of the, uh, <coughs> the, the, the issues is, uh, you know, about, uh, about orderly, legal, regular migration. And so the, the point is that uh, the but people... But would orderly, are, legal, and regular mig migrants not be packed on ships floating around? Precisely. That's, so that's, uh, that's, hence the term irregular. Uh, yeah. I mean, you can find other words to use. But uh, what we mean are the people who, okay. have, uh, who have been gotcha. fleeing by birth. Um, um, yes, and then you said that uh, you the you need would want that people need to address the root cause of, uh, of this crisis. What, in the U view of the United States, is the root cause of this particular migrant crisis going on in uh, Southeast Asia? Well, I think you can you also see this in the uh, there was a, a a document issued from from the meeting um, and in it, in the text where it uh, talks about root causes. The statement discusses promoting full respect for human rights and adequate access of people to basic rights and services, such as housing, education, uh, health care. Um, clearly, these are points we've made with respect to the, uh, the uh, Rohingya population uh, in Burma uh, in the past. Uh, we uh, continue to, to make those So you points. believe that the Burmese government has a particular responsibility to address root causes of this crisis, as opposed to, say, the government of the Philippines? Well, I don't believe they were participants in the uh, well, in the meeting anyway. But I, I, your, point, your point is, yes, of course, as because, opposed to the government of Indonesia or yeah, Malaysia, uh, certainly. So, certainly. so uh, when Burma, we talk about the root causes, that's Burma slash Myanmar has a special responsibility. Yeah, and Assistant Secretary this. Richard and, made that made that point uh, today. Right. She stressed because the need to well, say. Well, the reason you know, I'm asking and yeah. pushing on it is because the Burmese were at, at the meeting were mm. were very adamant that they not be right. blamed for you know. That they not shoulder the the blunt of the uh, of or the brunt of the blame here, uh, even though 
the brunt of the migrants are coming from their country. Mm -hmm. So, would, what, what do you think about that? Does that is that just a you know an abdication of responsibility? Well, I, I mean, as to the as to the statement by the Burmese officials, I refer you back to them. I, we our our sense and the sense from Assistant Secretary Richard in the meeting was that there was a great deal of support for addressing root causes. Indeed, it's in it's in the uh, the document that they issued, which was uh, which was agreed by uh, by the participants. Uh, in the meeting, so uh, so we would certainly stand by that. I would add, maybe as a as a certain uh, as a small footnote, that uh, you know uh, there is um, you know in addition to the Rohingya population uh, that has been uh, fleeing and uh, many of you know who've been many of the people on the boats, uh, there have also been uh, people from Bangladesh uh, mm -hmm. as well. So uh, you know I wouldn't want to say that uh, you know that, that they are the only uh, source uh, <coughs> country for people who have been. Um, you know, at sea uh, in these last few weeks. Elliot, last one. Can I follow up on the South China Sea issue? Yeah. Um, Assistant Secretary Russell, when he was on the, the Hill a few weeks ago, got some pretty tough questions from, from members of Congress, um, basically saying, you know, that the, the issue of uh, land reclamation has been going on for quite some time and that um, continuously condemning or, you know, really putting out statements to the effect that it's contrary to international law and things of that sort are fine, but uh, essentially they're having no in, no effect, and so now it's time for for you know something to actually back up those statements, some kind of action in a sense. Do you see that as holding any water at all, or, or what's your response to that kind of criticism? Uh, well, uh, again, our uh, our policy uh, on uh, on the South China Sea um, and the territorial disputes there, um, you know, I think, has been clear, and we've uh, talked about it uh, a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, I think also Secretary uh, Carter uh, mentioned uh, yesterday. That uh, you know the United States will uh, will operate, uh, that is, will fly, we will sail uh, where international law uh, allows. Uh, you know we do our operations in in accordance with international law around the world, and we will continue to do that. So I think there's uh, you know it's clear that uh, this is an important interest to the United States, and we uh, we remain committed to uh, you know not only to the freedom of. Uh, you know, navigation and uh, overflight, uh, but also that uh, that, that the tensions uh, uh, remain, that they diminish, and that we work with our uh, partners in the region to that end. Mm -hmm. Sure. I, I guess my question was a little different. Um, mm -hmm. it, uh, referring specifically to land reclamation activities by okay. China, which you have, you know, spoken out quite yeah. strongly against and have said that, that you don't believe it to be... Um, you know, consistent with uh, with international law and, and, and you know, things like that. I guess I'm, I'm wondering if the administration is prepared to take any kind of action more than just what it's done so far, which is so far really just words. Well, I would I wouldn't uh, put it in the category of just words. Uh, I think if you look at uh, the you know if if you look at the statements that have come from uh, countries in the region uh, as well, uh, in in some cases from other claimants, also from ASEAN. Uh, I think there has been you know a, a lot of support uh, across the region but for those are just words uh, as well. Those are statements. Well, um, but I, I think if you look at the policies of these governments, uh, they, they, uh, we're, we're in accordance with them. I'm not sure what uh, additional action you're suggesting. Uh, it's a little bit hard to um, speculate I mean, some on kind something. Of um, <laughs> maybe maybe that's what Elliot wants. I'm not sure. I'm not going to put him on the spot and uh, and make him answer. That's your job with me. Um, but uh, again, we're uh, you know we're committed to working with our, our partners in the region. I don't have any specific further steps to announce okay. right now. I think uh, you know the Secretary Carter is at the Shangri La dialogue. Uh, he'll uh, he'll be speaking uh, to uh, too many of these uh, issues, I imagine, uh, while he's there. I just yep. wanted to follow up on a question that I uh, yesterday on the um, uh, emails. Mm -hmm. Uh, and whether or okay. not this new re <clears throat> reports about, <clears throat> excuse me, about um, uh, Sid Blumenthal and his employment with the Clinton Foundation had, had, had caused the State Department any concern or, you know, prompted any kind of a, a relook, or if you're still. Uh, no, I don't have uh, any. I don't have any concerns to report. Or, um, but do you know if, if 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 it's been looked into and, and concerns have been rejected, or if it just not been looked into at all and you think that this matter is the building thinks that this is is not an issue and just for I think what we said a couple of weeks ago which is that we don't uh, you know we don't have uh, plans to go back and do a uh, right but that was before this latest report about well although the, we had you know when when I when I made that point uh, you know that was that was uh, granted before we had released those uh, publicly but it was uh, it was also when we you know we had we had already provided them to the select committee uh, at that point, we had received uh, the emails from 
Secretary Clinton and so forth. So I, I don't see any change to that uh, that statement that uh, right, we and, made. Well, so a you're saying that, they, that that the that the case is, for lack of a better word, the case, the case is closed, regardless of how much additional information keeps dripping out about. Well, again, I'm not, things I, I, that are things the things that were that are related to the the information the that you're referring to was in our possession when uh, you know, when I made uh, when I made that the uh, payment the, the the payment that he was receiving from the foundation. Oh, you're you asking you're asking that? about that. Uh, yeah, I'm that asking that um, since that report came mm -hmm. out, did it rate, has that report or have those reports if there were more than one caused any concern or raised any flags here in the building to the point where you would want to go back and look and, okay, to see. Okay, I understand your question. And if not, uh, I mean, if not, okay, but uh, I'm just wondering yeah. why not or is there in, is there anything that might come out in the future that would cause uh, the, the department to change its position on saying that this is a done deal and referring all the questions to the foundation. So with respect to your question about uh, whether this had caused any any relook, uh, no, not that I'm not that I'm aware. Uh, I don't have anything further. But, but you don't know. Hmm? You don't know or I'm, I'm not aware of any uh, of any. Uh, well, I guess the question, but I, I, that, mm -hmm. I mean, there, there, can you, can there you, is there is no there out? is no relook happening. Uh, there isn't. Uh, and, do, and do you but do you know, is there anything that is it case closed no matter what or is there a possible new information that could come out that would cause a rethink of that? Uh, that that's uh, that's such an open question. I, I don't really have uh, uh, an answer. An answer. Okay, to but it. this latest thing does not did not meet the st whatever standard there might be for going back and taking a look at, at things uh, again. Correct. Okay. Thank Thanks. You.